to do domain lookup, which is a very nice thing to do to get more information about certain entities. For example, here I have domain tools. Uh, dot com and from the home page you could be doing uh, who is lookup who is actually a is a protocol being used to query databases about information for uh, domain registration domain ownership so um, let's do this let's have a look at uh, make it easiest dot com and let's get information about the domain uh, and you can see right here uh, information about make it um, easiest uh, this is an the email address and this is actually my uh, email address and down here you could get information just like where exactly the um, administration technical uh, administration um, okay uh, is located um, phone numbers okay uh, when exactly this uh, domain has been uh, registered all these are information you could get just using who has lookup um, actually a lot <laughs> a lot of um, hacking uh, or actually let's let's say a lot of recon uh, reconnaissance attacks could be done using who has lookup just to get more and more information about people names uh, phone numbers okay so um, you know I use who has lookup all the time to get information about websites and um, sometimes people <laughs> but anyways uh, just use it wisely um, so this is actually um, how to get information just like the IP address the name server whatever uh, about certain um, domain what I really want to uh, give you an idea about let's do autonomous system uh, lookup let's see who exactly is using um, which autonomous system so um, here I have um, a website for a company called Hurricane Electric uh, they provide internet services and from the PGP page at uh, hurricane hurricane electric uh, um, I can see that they are simply telling me the IP address I'm coming from and the uh, ISP I'm belonging to or I'm actually leasing service from which is it's a lot Mr. Uh, it's an ISP in Egypt uh, where actually I'm recording this video from and uh, what is nice about this is actually it provides you with information about the autonomous system uh, simply the autonomous system number and you could click on this autonomous system and you could get a lot of info uh, you could know uh, to whom this uh, autonomous system um, is connected and get information about peers using IP version 4 peering okay and as you can see uh, my ISP is connected with these um, autonomous systems some of them are in Egypt some of them in Europe okay and um, like for example uh, data communication uh, which has an uh, autonomous system number of 6453 you could actually click on this peer and you could move over and get information about Tata communication you could also get uh, peers BGP peers and uh, as you can see they mostly are peering with um, well a lot of ISPs um, or actually most of the ISPs in the ISP in, in the world um, for example they are appearing with level 3 global crossing Verizon okay uh, Telia Telia net probably this is Telia Sonera of Europe uh, yeah so um, also you could actually uh, view a graph of the uh, 
BGP peering sessions. Okay, and actually what BGP peering simply means is just having um, neighbor relationship with um, a router that you could actually send and receive BGP updates uh, and communicate okay with so um, this is a very nice tool to get information about uh, different autonomous systems okay and um, let's ask ourselves um, another question why do we use different thing called uh, or different routing protocol called BGP and instead of just using things like OSPF or um, B, um, yeah, GRP okay IGP in other words so um, to respond to this question actually I want to ask another question which is how big is the internet uh, this is a silly question I know because actually the internet is huge and we have a lot we have millions we have millions of networks uh, all over the world connected to the internet and we are talking about something like um, 200,000 okay of prefixes in the internet routing table okay so uh, can OSPF or any other interior gateway protocol handle such amount of updates prefixes well no probably they can't because actually uh, for example OSPF as we know uses uh, an algorithm called SPF algorithm which is kind of complicated algorithm and OSPF uses this algorithm each and every time and um, something occurs in our network for example network went down network went up and to actually know what will happen let's ask ourselves um, how many networks how many network changed its state in a second over the internet we have a lot of networks that are changing going up and down and with such huge amount of changes uh, something like OSPF will not be able to handle so um, we have to use more um, wise um, routing protocol something that is more geared toward uh, dealing with huge networks um, for example BGP has ways and means to deal with flapping networks like giving penalty so anytime a flapping network trying to uh, spoil uh, the atmosphere for example flapping network simply means that it is a network that is going up going up and down you know just we have bad connection we have bad cables so the interface is coming up and down so each and every time we have um, a connection problem we need to send an update if we are using something like OSBF but on the other hand if we are using BGP we could actually applying penalty uh, just like um, BGP stop advertising this network unless it started to settle down and stabilize okay otherwise uh, BGP will not advertise this network so BGP has many many tools to deal with such huge amount of information it's kind of slow by design and it is required to be slow because uh, as we agreed we need more wise routing protocol we do not want a routing protocol that is um, you know is simply uh, mad about being uh, you know overwhelmed uh, with a huge amount of information uh, like for example OSPF it sends uh, an update each and every time uh, something happened to the network so um, 
BGP is more geared toward um, huge networks, networks just like the internet. Now, um, with that in mind, let's talk about internet connection options. This is our customer right here, and it has a customer edge router, and this router is connected to the ISP through something like DSL or T1, E1 connection, okay, um, and it is connected to the provider edge router. In this case, we have only just one um, internet connection to one ISP, and this we call single hold. Uh, we could just to add reliability, um, we could have multiple connections from the customer edge router over to the ISP, and in this case, we could be considered dual homed. Okay. Also, we could have connections to different ISPs, okay, just to um, have reliability. So whenever the whole ISP went down, we could be using the connection through the other ISP. And also, we could be doing something like uh, load balancing between different ISPs, sending traffic to some prefixes through one ISP and sending other traffic to other prefixes through the other ISP. Other option could be dual multi-homed. Okay, the last one was called uh, single multi-homed. Multi-homing is simply about connecting to multiple ISPs, like two, three, four of them. Uh, dual multi-homed is connecting our customer using two different routers, each connected to ISP using multiple physical connections. And this is more and more reliability and resiliency. Um, of course, this comes with a cost, a cost of, um, you know, leasing more and more um, internet links. Um, we need to respond to an important question, which is when to implement BGP. What kind of implementation we're going to need BGP? Yeah. So, um, will we ever need to use BGP if we are single homed? I don't think so, because actually we agreed that we have 20,000 plus routes over the internet and to use BGP and send these routes over to our customer, however, our customer has only one connection to reach any one of these prefixes, which is this connection right here, I don't think there is a real need to send all these prefixes, just having a default route that is pointing toward the ISP will